In this video, we're going to use what's called the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of a given function. And you might recall from an earlier video, uh, the definition of derivative is this limit expression. The limit is h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And if you'd like a quick review on the limit expression, how it came about, you can check out our video on the definition of the derivative introduction. But in the meantime, uh, let's start at the beginning of this solution. So the first step, solution, the first step is to apply the definition to our given function. So the definition says that our derivative is in fact the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. And now the key here is, let's change color for a moment, we need to figure out f of x plus h and then notice f of x. And this is where my students typically run into some problems. So the f of x plus h means we want to substitute or plug in x plus h wherever x is in our original formula. So that means we're going to square our function as a squaring formula. We're going to square the quantity x plus h. We ran out of space here. x plus h. And f of x is just the equation right here, the formula x squared. And so what, we're at, what we end up with here is the limit as h goes to 0. Now instead of f of x plus h, we have this formula, x plus h squared. x plus h quantity squared minus x squared all divided by h. Okay, now here we want to square x plus h. You can do this on the side. Sometimes uh, my students like to do this on the side. Uh, I realize this is algebra, but a lot of times the algebra is what gets my calculus students uh, in hot water. So I'm going to foil this out for you. So x times x is x squared. And then x times h is xh plus hx gives us 2xh and then plus h squared. So this is our x plus h quantity squared. Alright, so let's go to the next step. So all we're doing is substituting x squared plus 2xh plus h squared here. And so we end up with the limit as h goes to 0 of, and instead of x plus h all squared, we're going to put this expression. We have x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared all divided by h. Now something nice and convenient occurs. Plus x squared minus x squared cancel. And so we're left with the limit as h goes to 0 of now 2xh plus h squared. But there is a common factor of h. You might notice there's an h and an h. There's a common factor. So I'm going to factor that out. So I've factored out a common factor of h in the top here. So there's a what's left over is just 2xh plus h squared. There is a common factor. This is exactly what we want or hope for, uh, is that there's an h in the numerator, a factor of h in the numerator, that will be able to cancel out the problem of the uh, h in the denominator. 
because otherwise we could just evaluate h equals 0 in our expression, but this h in the denominator is what gives us a problem. So it's really nice that our factors of h here cancel so that this problem in the denominator goes away. So now we have the limit as h goes to 0, 2x plus h. And now we can evaluate essentially, we can let this h go to 0, and we're left with 2x. Now, an important but subtle point here is the reason we can cancel the h's out is because we're in a le limit expression. We're not doing 0 divided by 0 here. Uh, what we're doing is we're canceling out a very small number that's approaching 0 but not equal to 0. So when you have a limit expression, if you can cancel out the problems you know, the, where you where you get into trouble evaluating the actual number. If that if that problem can be canceled away, that's wonderful. Because then you can go ahead and evaluate the limit straight straight away. So h does go to zero here, and we can actually find the limit of 2x. So what does that mean? That means that our derivative f prime is in fact 2x. So the derivative in this case, is 2x, where the original function was x squared. Okay, so now let's try a slightly different problem. Let's say we're given let's say we're given f of x equals the square root of x. And we want to find the derivative using the same definition, the same limit definition that we did above. OK, so we're going to apply the same basic differentiation rule. Solution. I shouldn't say differentiation rule the same definition for the derivative. Later on, you'll get some differentiation rules. OK, so we have f of x. The limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. OK, so here, the f of x plus h is the square root of x plus h. What we basically want to do is we want to substitute x plus h into our formula for the function f. So that means we end up with, let's change colors here, the square root of x plus h. And then f, f of x, is just the square root of x. So go back to the purple. So what we have here is the derivative is now the, the limit as h goes to 0 of the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x all divided by h. Now this expression if we wanted to substitute h immediately, h equals 0, that's a problem. We can't put in 0 in the denominator. So what we want to try to do is the same basic idea in the, in the first example where we ended up with a common factor of h in the numerator that could cancel with the h in the denominator. But in order to do that, we're going to use a trick here. We're going to multiply by the conjugate. to rationalize the numerator. And the conjugate is the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. So a quick review of some algebra. Let me change colors here. So quick review, quick algebra review. 
you might want to recall given the square root of a plus the square root of b the conjugate is just the square root of a minus the square root of b and going the other way around if you were given the square root of a minus the square root of b the conjugate, it's just a fancy name for changing the sign between the square roots the square root of a plus the square root of b and another thing we might want to remember is if you multiply the original expression times the conjugate that ends up just being a minus b and that's because you have a the square root of a times the square root of a is the square root of a squared then the square root of a times negative square root of b is negative the square root of a b and then you have plus the square root of a b and then plus times minus becomes minus square root of b times the square root of b is the square root of b squared these expressions cancel and then you have the square root of a squared is a minus the square root of b squared is b so in other words if you have this original expression times its conjugate a nice simplification occurs now the only other thing we have to take care of is we've multiplied the numerator by the conjugate in order to keep this fraction equivalent we have to do the same to the bottom we have to multiply by the same number or the same expression rather in the bottom so this is basically a very fancy one this is kind of like a very fancy one here it's the same thing up top as it is down below now moving to the next step if we multiply the conjugate times the original expression remember here you end up with this dropping off the square roots and you end up with x plus h and if that's a little confusing you can go back over this quick review and I'll, I'll try to do something on multiplying conjugates um, but basically multiplying the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x times this conjugate we end up with just x plus h that's the a here minus x that's b so it's kind of think of it as basically a was x plus h down in the formula and b was x down here okay so then down below that's the numerator down below we have h times the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x you might think or hope that things are getting a little bit simpler and in fact they are so now x minus x cancels so we're left with just h up top down below we have h times the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Now we have h factored out. You might have been tempted to multiply h through the, not through the denominator, but actually it helps us to keep it factored. So there's just a 1 up top here now. And so we have the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over 
the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Let's change colors here. So we can consider h going to 0, which means just this part goes to 0. Then that means we're left with 1 over the square root of x plus 0 is the square root of x. And then here we have the square root of x. And that's also 1 over 2 times the square root of x. And that is our de derivative for the original function. So we have 1 over 2 times the square root of x. I hope this helped give you an idea of how the definition of the derivative, this definition of the derivative, can be applied to find the derivative of a couple of different functions.